why all these changes? Why why is this happening to us? What's going on? Did a bit of research, realised there were lots of women talking about the same kind of thing, and there's not a lot of information out there for that 40 to 60 part of women's lives, and we wanted to just get the word out. Really. And it's bringing, it's bringing things like Mum's Net to life, these kind of conversations, these kind of double acts and interviews, and so one of the best ways to do a podcast like this is to set out an agenda, uh, also, you know, sort of... Uh, create a community and then invite people on uh, for different takes on their own lives that may relate to other people's lives that are listening. Yeah, it's personal stories and women telling it how they've experienced it, which, you know, and there's not a lot about it. It's not a lot about it in the media. There's not a lot about it on radio. And we just thought this is a good place to tell mm. stories. And it's, kind of, it's, it's about midlife as well, isn't it? It's yeah. not just about uh, that particular part of being a woman, but it's, it's everything that happens it's like to a us. a perfect storm uh, of just... Yeah, teenage, if you've got a parent <laughs> and teenagers... Going over there, their hormones are coming yeah. in here. You're all trying to live in one space. Yeah, it's... and you're trying to hold down a job and do all the yeah. things yeah. that, you, that you're doing. You, you think you're getting a bit of your life back, but then are you or are you not yeah. getting... Uh, what, what, and by the way, what bits of this life... Oh, I've never had this life before, so I can't be getting it back, but it reminds yeah. me of something that I maybe once had. And also, you, you're thinking, in the time I've got left, now I might be halfway through in this pause bit, you know, am I, I'm never going to win an Olympic medal, I'm never going to do all these things, but I'm really going to make it count. But at the same time, you've got all this teenager family stuff happening And also well. ageing parents as well. That's, yep. We've had yeah. a lot of people contacting us about that. So we are, it's that phrase, isn't it, sandwich. The sandwich generation. You, you're, trying surra- to do it. you're surrounded by um, challenges and opportunities. Yes. And or opportunities. That's yeah, the thing, exactly. isn't it, I suppose. OK, so, so uh, g- give your qualifications first of all so you are how old uh, how many marriages how many children uh, <laughs> what do you want to tell us about yourself so we know that you are qualified on, to have these okay, conversations I'll go first. so you go. um i am 53 years old mm-hmm. this year no and... way no way no way, <laughs> no way. thank you no way. thank you i am 53 years old i have been married to my husband uh, i met him when i was 19 right. and we've been together for over 30 years now and uh, we have 16 year old twins they're going to be 16 on sunday happy birthday esme and kit and um i have been a magazine editor for all of my career, I edited um, Red Magazine, InStyle Magazine, and most recently, Marie Claire Magazine. All right, well, good for you. Okay, what about you, Lorraine? Um, I'm 51, a little bit younger. No way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 51. I've got four children. They are 17, 16, 8, and 13, three girls and a boy. And I've been editor of Cosmopolitan, editor of Elle. I'm now the editor of Sunday Times Style, but I've also worked um, across both newspapers and magazines all my life, um, working fashion and beauty. Um, I've been married for 20 years this year to James. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So you are more than qualified, and there are two of you. So you're doubly qualified uh, as a whole well, we, sort of podcast. Being. Yeah, and we've worked in with women for years and years and years, and our, all our audiences, you know, when you edit Cosmo, when you edit Elle, yeah, Marie yeah, Claire yeah. and Red, you, you learn about women and their lives and what they want to talk about and how they want to talk about it. And I think the thing about Postcards from Midlife is it's just a, quite a nice community. Of, we've had such lovely responses yeah. from people. So how many have you done? This is, uh, on Sunday, it will be the sixth one. OK, so this is your first 12, your first series of 12. Yes, it is, okay. yeah. OK, and at lifelessonsfestival.com, which is this weekend, people can still get tickets, lifelessonsfestival.com. It's uh, two days of brilliant brains, brilliant stories, great information, great ideas, uh, sort of expansive ex- existential conversations under the same roof, featuring some amazing names. Um, you'll be recording another podcast there. Yes, we're going to do a live podcast. I mean, we, how a the hell we got ourselves in? Like, we're dead, a live podcast. Uh, It'll be recorded. Will it be live? No, will it won't be. Oh, It'll no, be I'm It'll be as live. As that's live. Podcast. Yeah, we'll go out soon after with Kate Garraway. Okay. Um, because she's she's really good on how she decided to change her life when she hit her 50. She so wanted to do something really that. brave. She felt that she was scared. Her kids had said to her, you, you're, you're not being brave, Mum. You're not making big decisions. And she that's why she did The Jungle. She went into I'm a Celebrity. Right. And she's come back with a whole new zest for life, I guess. And uh, well, I wanted her to talk about that because we talk about all sorts of things on the, our postcards. We do a- HRT, menopause. We do all the medical stuff, we do all the emotional stuff and all the teenager careers, stuff. But all careers, that stuff. yes. We, as you say, we had a woman with um, 10 children on. But Kate's going to talk about that being brave and making a change. And as, as you do more of these, you will gain a, a bigger audience, you'll have a bigger community, and you'll get more feedback. And then it takes a li- on a life of its own. And that's when yeah. it gets really exciting. Yeah, I think that's what we, because this conversation's not really being, the, you know, people don't know what the perimenopause is. It's sort of 15 years of a completely new you. And we wanted to get that 
message out there and that's going to start to come back from the communities. But we've had some women who've been in really dark, awful places with awful anxiety, awful depression. They've been offered antidepressants and actually what they need is HRT. Oestrogen is receptors are all over your body and when oestrogen disappears, your whole body changes. But GPs aren't as informed as they could be. So a lot of these women have been offered antidepressants by overworked, hard-working GPs and actually that's not what they need at all. And within six weeks, you can completely change the way you are so I think just getting that out has been mm. that's been quite nice getting that back from I think we just wanted we knew women were talking about it and we wanted other women to come and tell us their stories it, that that's the community and I think we're being, building. because we're journalists we always have an angle so um, you know we, we've got this trained into us so each of those yes. women we will um, go in on a particular angle so Louise it was this idea she's back out on the road with her band sleeper she was a huge rock star in her 20s wearing and it's this leather idea of and leopard print yeah. and it's like well you know how how does she feel she, you know, p portrayed as a kind of sex symbol in her 20s. What kind of response is she now getting in her 50s? She's still wearing yeah. leather skirts and, you know, all of yeah. that and looking absolutely brilliant. So we want to talk about specific um, pertinent things with these women as well. And be funny and humorous and celebrate the joy of the next bit of our lives. Yeah, of which... course. Because, I mean, you know, uh, when you count your, the rest of your potential days in summers and Christmases, it really focuses yeah, the mind. I not to do that. No, but I think it, I think it really helps. Yeah. It makes me really melancholy and sad. No, yeah. but, well, initially... Yes. yes, so that's the short-term emotion. So emotions are useful short-term as springboards to 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 have a look at what you might be yeah. able to mm -hmm. apply from a lot more, you know, long form. Um, and I think that helps. Well, I think it helps. Also, so it gets you going. It gets you going, and then when you've got someone to talk to about mm -hmm. it, and then you realise other women are talking about it, it just spurs you on a bit. I think mm -hmm. we're trying to make it light-hearted as well. It's not kind of, you know, it's not intense and serious. No, it's quite we have a little, we have a little segment at the end where we we, we call it nostalgia noodling, where yes. we look back yeah. on all the the kind of stuff that um, you know from our childhoods and uh, teen years, and you know, because we were the we were the ones going to see Oasis originally, and yeah. we were going to Glastonbury. We were doing all of these things, so. So it's quite fun to look back on some of the, I think, the funny little things I think things it's a really interesting well. time because, you know, um, if you think about the 60s and about what, what went on in the 60s, and we were just being born then, mm -hmm. we? Yeah. so we didn't yeah. witness the 60s, but we were a product of the 60s, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. Yeah. We are a product yeah. of the 60s. So the second best thing to being there to witness the 60s is being a product of the 60s. Yeah. And then because we, we had that sort of liberated experience in the 70s, you know, post-World War II, and our mums and dads were enjoying this rainbow that they thought they may never see, um, then there was, there was, we were born out of positivity. We were born out of optimism. And for us to now be middle-aged and for things to be going on in and around the world that, you know, as they are, we might be, um, we might not be, but we might be the generation who gets the fact that we have to fix this because that's where we came from. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And before yeah. that, this generation never existed mm. because you didn't need that optimism because, well, some lots of terrible things that have happened, but not to the extent that they did in the first half of the 20th century. But that's what's so brilliant about having teenagers. They're kind of relentlessly passionate about stuff. I mean, they whether they know the facts or not, they just it's just brilliant having them in the room talking about how they are going to fix it. Well, mine are like that, yeah. They think they're going to fix this mess Because you're their made. mum, that's why yeah. you're a brilliant mum. <laughs> now, what you also did at the end of your podcast is you, you list things that are particularly pertinent uh, on your radar at the moment. Mm -hmm. So things like what, for example... Oh my gosh! All sorts of well, Megan Rossi we had on because I've know. been trying her. Um, I've been doing the guts. I mean, Trish is very healthy and very good at cooking. We're like the opposite <laughs> personality, so she'll always have something quite good domestic-wise, yeah. and I'll always have some mad thing, open water swimming. A lot of the I've books that we read as well. Um, books, I talked about records, a friend giving yeah. me this lovely little uh, book about ikigai, which I think you were quite into, Chris. Yeah, no, Chris. I, love it. I love that and book. It's a little blue book, a little, isn't it? little blue book. Yeah, oh, I love book. it. By the bed. It's on the bedside table. Yeah. Pick that up and read that, which is all about finding your purpose yeah. and value and And enjoying and the process and not worrying exactly. about the end, just enjoying the means. So, and... Yeah, so it's just sharing little, nice little things that, that might be make helpful, us might be useful to yeah. other people, you know, might move people along a bit. Yeah, good, good. Uh, so, so the next six episodes, so you're halfway through. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. It's half time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> been fired. No <laughs> swearing. How does it feel? You can swear on podcasts. Yeah. Can, can you swear on podcasts? Of course you can. I didn't know that. You told me I couldn't swear on podcasts. Yeah, you absolutely you can. I mean, that's what, what I mean. You know, if you listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, that's the reason that lots of the superstars go on there because they can have a normal conversation. Swear. Okay, we'll do not, some not... swearing. We're going to do some swearing. <laughs> maybe, yeah. not on, maybe not at life lessons on Saturday. You'll do a list for me of words I can and cannot use, won't you? That would be. Oh, uh... dear me. What is it? This, um, what is it? The, oh, God. The, 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 the most dreaded four letter word in <gasps> life is more. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And the least appreciated word is enough. <gasps> See, oh. not at all you were thinking about <laughs> no, that. No, not at all. Where you were going we've got on. some good things coming up, though. So we've yeah. got looking after ageing parents. Yeah. We? We've got a little bit more on HRD. We've got the world's one of the world's leading breast cancer doctors coming on with his daughter to talk about HRT and the risks and all of that. But so, what's yeah. interesting about you, you saying that is, is quite interesting because the podcast world isn't so much about what's coming up it's about the podcast you've done because yeah. people you you can promote what's happened in yeah. the past as much as what's almost more than what's happening in the future because once people fall in love with the podcast they what they do then is start say they fall in po- in love with podcast 392 they go back to number one mm-hmm. so it's what is it's that's what i love about podcasts mm-hmm. you know radio is very much of the moment podcasts are sort of the the n- n- there should be a pod fl- pod um Podflix. There should be Podflix. <laughs> Podflix. Yeah, because yeah. um, that would that would make sense, yeah. wouldn't it? You yeah. go back and you watch all your fa- or you listen to all your favourites, and of course you listen to one and you reference another within the one mm-hmm. you're doing, and everybody mm-hmm. goes, "Oh, let's go over there, let's go over there." It's, mm-hmm. it's, sorry, it's ex- really it exciting. Is, and people share them; they're sharing them yeah. all the time. They this is free advice. Friends, it's it's great. Great. Yeah, it's yeah. free advice. <laughs> well, well done, you two, and uh, good luck this weekend. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.